Welcome to Isinam over tutoring YouTube channel. This is Peter. In this video, I'll be taking you through vertical projectile motion part one. Vertical projectile motion, as the title suggests, we are talking about a vertical motion of a projectile. A projectile is an object upon which the only force acting is the force of gravity. The motion of a projectile is called a free fall, which can be defined as the motion of an object falling under an influence of gravitational force only. So it makes perfect sense for us to have a free body diagram with the gravitational force only. So now recall that an object accelerates in the direction of the net force. That is Newton's second law of motion. In other words, since projectiles net force is the force of gravity, because that's the only force acting, the projectile will accelerate due to gravity. And remember, the gravitational acceleration is a constant of 9,8 meters per second squared. That's the magnitude and the direction is downwards. So when they say write down the acceleration of an object and that object is a projectile, you are going to write 9,8 meters per second squared downwards. Remember, an acceleration is a vector quantity, so direction must be taken into consideration. But when they said write the magnitude of the acceleration, you only write 9,8 meters per second squared because they are now specific. They want only the magnitude. Although the projectile's motion is a vertical motion, but when we represent it in drawing, we represent it parabolic, as you can see on the diagram. So when the object is going up, the velocity decreases that's very vital to know remember as the object is going up there is a force pulling it down the force of gravity and that's the only force acting so it keeps on pulling it down pulling it down pulling it down as it goes up so that's the reason why the velocity of an object is gradually decreasing as the object is going up. Eventually, the object will reach a point where its velocity is zero meters per second, and that point is called the maximum height. Now, the object cannot go up furthermore because it has reached its highest point. So it now has to go down from the maximum height. As it goes down, the velocity increases. And that makes perfect sense because the force of gravity is now pulling in the same direction as the direction of motion. So in that way, the velocity will increase as it goes down. Another important thing about the object's motion is, is that when the object is going up from point A, reaching the maximum height and coming back to point A or point B, the point aligned with A, is that the velocity at A is the same as the velocity at B, but in the opposite direction. For example, when the object is thrown vertically upwards at a velocity of 5 meters per second, the object will reach point B with the velocity of 5 meters per second, but in the opposite direction, meaning going downwards. When the velocity at A is positive, then the velocity at B is negative with same magnitudes. Another thing, when the object is projected from point A to point C, the time it takes to reach point B from A is the same as the time it takes to reach point C from point B. That is to return to its starting point. And this is called time symmetry. When the object took 10 seconds, for example, going from point A to point C. That is 5 seconds from point A to B, 5 seconds from point B to C. And when it takes 3 seconds from point A to point B, that is 6 seconds from A to C because it also going to take because it also going to take another 3 seconds from B to C. All right, those are first two important things you need to know or take into consideration. Now, when we perform calculations, we need to remember that we are dealing with vectors. So choosing direction is of supreme importance. 
in this chapter. Taking upward motion as positive, remember gravitational acceleration is always downwards. So when you take upwards as positive, you are going to have a negative acceleration because the acceleration is opposing the upward motion. And remember, the gravitational acceleration is a constant, meaning once the upward is chosen as positive the acceleration will be negative throughout regardless of the direction of the object's motion so myself uh i always choose up as positive till i get used to it then when the examiner is instructing me to choose up as negative i do the opposite of what i have already mastered so you need to take note of this that when you choose up as positive your acceleration is always negative so let's take up as positive and the object is going up. So when the object is going up and we took up as positive, the initial velocity is positive because we are going up and we, we took up as positive. And then the final velocity is also positive when the object is caught before reaching its maximum height or the final velocity is zero meters per second when the object is at the maximum height. Remember, the velocity at the maximum height is always known and is zero meters per second. Its magnitude is zero meters per second. And then the acceleration is negative 9,8 meters per second squared. Remember, we took up as positive and the acceleration is opposing the motion because the acceleration is downwards always. And the displacement or the change in position is positive because the object is going up and we took up as positive. Delta T is always positive. Remember, time is a scalar quantity and we cannot have a negative time. Now the object is going down and we took up as positive. So the object is going to the opposite direction. So the initial velocity is negative or zero when the object is from the maximum height or when the object is dropped. So another case where the object where the object's velocity is zero is when the object is dropped. So be careful when you read through the statement. Once they say the object is dropped, you already know the initial velocity is zero meters per second. So the final velocity is negative because the object is going down and we took up as positive. Acceleration is negative 9,8 meters per second squared. Remember, acceleration is a constant. So once it's negative, it's gonna be negative throughout. And then delta y is negative. Remember now the object is going down and we took up as positive, so the opposite direction. Delta t is positive always. Delta t or time is a scalar quantity, remember. So make sure you are able to choose the direction. Now we are going to be using equations of motion to perform calculations. I personally use only these three equations because I'm trying to, to reduce options for myself. Because when I have plenty to choose from, I will end up not knowing which one to choose. And by the way, the fourth one does not have an acceleration. So yeah. So the first one, Vf equals Vi plus A delta T is for calculating time and velocity, either final or initial velocity. The second one is for calculating displacement and velocity. The third one, displacement, velocity, and time. But I hardly use it for calculating time. Moving on to the very important part of this lesson. Now, this is very, very important and very smart to do. So what you need to do is to divide the object's motion into different segments, especially for a, a scenario like this one. The object goes from point A to point D. Point D is at the ground. Now, A is the roof of a building. B is the maximum height. Dividing the motion into segments reveals more important information about the object. If you look at, for example, segment AB, you know that the velocity at B is zero meters per second. Remember, B is the maximum height. In segment BC, 
the velocity at B is 0 meters per second. At C, the velocity is the same as the velocity at A, but in the opposite direction. Again, in segment CD, velocity at C is the same as the velocity at A, but in the opposite direction. Another important thing is that the time taken by an object to travel from A to B is the same as the time taken to travel segment BC. So the time of the object's entire motion, that is from A to D, can be the time from A to B plus time from B to C plus time from C to D, or can be the time from A to B plus time from B to D. So that's how it goes. So I have spoken about the maximum height being the point where the object's velocity is zero meters per second. Now I want to talk about the maximum height being the actual height reached by an object above the point of projection or above the ground. So from point A to point B, that's the maximum height reached by an object or the maximum height reached by an object above the point of projection or the roof. The maximum height can be differentiated into two. One being the maximum height reached by an object, another one being the maximum height reached by an object above the ground. So there's a difference there between the maximum height reached by an object and the maximum height reached by an object above the ground. Remember the ground is at point D. The maximum height reached by an object is the height AB. That is the maximum height reached by an object above the roof or just the maximum height reached by an object. The maximum height reached by an object above the ground is the height AB plus the height of a building or height BC plus height CD. D is at the ground or height BD. The very important thing in this chapter is to make sure there is correspondence between given information and the question being asked. You can't be calculating time from A to B with the velocities at A and at D. Using velocities at A and at D simply means you are calculating time from A to D. That's how it goes. So the question you need to be asking yourself is that because they're asking me to calculate time from A to B, am I using the velocities at A and B? If the answer is no, then you are totally out of the way because there's no correspondence between the given information and the question being asked. So make sure all the time when you perform calculations, the given information corresponds with the question being asked so that you won't be making mistakes regarding calculations. Okay, you could see that the distance or the height AB equals the height BC. But remembering that the displacement or the change in position is a vector quantity allows you to take note of the fact that delta y from a, b is positive, delta y from b to c is negative, although they are equal in magnitude. Remember, an object will cover portion a, b on its way up so delta y is positive remember we took up as positive and then portion bc will be covered by an object going down so delta y in that case is negative so delta y for the entire motion of an object will be delta y from a to b delta y from b to c and delta y from c to d but remember delta y from a to b is positive delta y from b to c is negative but they are equal in magnitude so a b and b c are gonna cancel out we are going to be left with portion c d or from c to the ground so delta y for the entire motion of an object is the actual height of the building mind you the object covers the height of a building on its way down so delta y for the entire motion will be negative change in position
and then let's say an object is going from is going up from the ground and then it goes to the roof of a building so in that case delta y for the entire motion of an object will be positive because the object is going to cover the height of a building on its way up so those are the very important things you need to take into consideration when you perform calculations, especially the change in position. Make sure you get your signs correct. So that's the end of the first part of vertical projectile motion. Please make sure you subscribe, you like, you share and tell your friends about this channel. Till we meet again in part two. Thank you very much.